It's now four months since Russian forces were accused of committing atrocities amounting to war crimes uh, early in the invasion of Ukraine. Back in early March, eight unarmed men were shot dead in a mass execution in the suburb of Bucha, which is outside Kyiv, and they were among an estimated 1,000 people who died during the month-long Russian occupation in that region. But one man, who was believed by the Russians to be dead, did manage to escape uh, what's become known as the massacre on Yablunska Street. Our special correspondent, Fergal Keane, has been to meet him. There are some distressing details in the report. In Ukrainian, it means the place of the apple trees, Yablunska. To the world, it's become synonymous with cruelty. It happened here at 144 Yablunska Street, a nondescript office building, but a crime that defined a new age of atrocity in Europe. This is the story of families shattered by a massacre and of a man meant to be dead, but who lived to bear witness. It begins in the opening days of the war, when men on Yablonska Street joined the territorial defence. There were fathers, sons, brothers, neighbours. Anatoly Prohichko joined up to protect his home and family. I just started started getting warm clothes for him. At that time, I felt there was nothing I could say to stop him. But by March 4th, the Russians were combing Bucha, searching for men of the territorial defence. Anatoly and eight others were by now hiding here at 31 Yablonska Street. By the following morning, the Russians had encircled the hiding place. On the 4th, at 10 a.m., he sent me a message saying, we're still sitting tight. That was his last message. This is what happened next. CCTV recorded the moments just after the men were captured. This image obtained by the BBC shows them being led towards the Russian base at 144 Yablonska Street. A neighbour filmed the next moments through his window. The men can be seen being lined up in front of a wall. Lucy Moskalenko was a witness and was disturbed by the words of a Russian officer. He told us um, don't look at those, at those people lying on the ground. Uh, this is, they are not humans. They are absolute dirt. Dirt. They are not human. They are beasts. It is through the extraordinary testimony of one man that we know what happened next. Ivan Skiba, a father of four, was never meant to survive his ordeal. What? The conversation went like this. What should we do with them? The second Russian says, finish them off. But just take them away so that they won't be lying here. The men were led around the corner to a quiet courtyard. We realised that we were being led to execution and we simply said goodbye to each other, and that was it. Then the shooting started. Ivan was hit. But the bullet passed through his side, causing only a small wound. He pretended to be dead. I was lying there, not breathing. It was cold outside. Breath was steaming up from my mouth, so I didn't breathe. I didn't move, and at the same time, I was expecting a shot. That was the most terrifying thing. They were telling jokes to each other. That is, they were in a jolly good mood. Ivan lay among the dead until the soldiers eventually left. He dragged himself over a fence and escaped. 
But the dead are close in memory for this haunted survivor and for their families. Every day, Olya Prohichko takes flowers and two cups of coffee, one for her, one for him, to her husband's grave. Менша донечка завжди говорить, що тато рядом. My younger daughter keeps saying, "Papa is near. Papa can see everything. Papa can hear everything." The older one. She gets distracted, like a child, plays, but then she remembers and starts crying. Do you talk to him still, yourself? Yes, of course, all the time. When no one can hear me, I call him by his name. In this grief, the crimes of war will echo for generations. Fergal Keane, BBC News, Jablonska Street. Latest evidence of the uh, terrible suffering uh, in Ukraine that was uh, Fergal reporting there for us.